Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. Uh, welcome to the Mental House uh, Sports Edition. Uh, and so with this story I want to talk about this evening is actually Shara Wright, who was the ex-wife of Lorenzen Wright. Those, those of y'all who know, uh, she has been accused and arrested and indicted for his murder, her along with a, a young man by the name of Billy Ray Turner. And um, there's just so much stuff coming out about her that it is insane. I think uh, Brother Thaddeus does a real good um, job of actually uh, exposing everything that mainstream media is not. Um, he's doing a very good job, being that he's there in Memphis, of bringing the information to us and um, updating us about the developments that are happening. But this was kind of disturbing to me, family. Um, and I'm just going to read it to you real quick, okay? Check this out. Now, what we're going to talk about is you cannot tell me that this does this wife doesn't have borderline personality written all over. We talk about these high conflict women, women who, um, you know, are high maintenance, and I also talk about dysfunctional behavior that we have grown to normalize, especially in in the African American community. This behavior is off the chain. It happens a lot. I don't, although I don't know if it always ends in murder or somebody being accused of murder. But what I do know is the reason why there's so many murders in the inner city, in my opinion, is because we have a lot of people walking around like Billy Ray Turner and Shara Wright, uh, who was known as Sharon, who was original name is Sharon. Before she called herself getting high class and changing it to Shara. Okay, but check this out, you guys. Because this this was a low-down, dirty bitch. And she was a cruel fuck. And that's why I said, I, you know, this, this particular, in my opinion, has the, um, has the borderline rage written all over it. But I want to share a story with y'all about the man named Kelvin Collins who says he was in a serious two-year relationship with Shara Wright um, that ended a year ago. Wright, who is now locked up, charged with the murder of her ex-husband and former Memphis basketball star Lorenzen Wright. Uh, Richard Ransom interviewed Collins in the same Harbor Town restaurant tugs where he and Shara had often dated. The restaurant sits in the dine in the shadow of the pyramid where Lorenzen Wright played so many basketball games. A freelance writer for the New York Tri-State Defender, Collins met Shara Wright while working on a story about the five-year anniversary of Lorenzen Wright's death, a murder. He said that within two weeks, the couple was in love. Does that surprise any of y'all who have been a victim of uh, borderlines or any high conflict, narcissistic personality relationship, how they want to expedite things, make it happen real quick before you know it, one minute you court them, uh, just went on a date, and the next minute y'all in a relationship, and it's been not even a good three or four days, got red flags written all over it. Anyway... A free rance writer for the writer for the New York Tri-State Defender, Cowers met Shara Wright while working on a story about the five-year anniversary of Lorenzo's murder. He said that within two weeks the couple was in love, absolutely no doubt about it. She was my friend. If I could just give a dollar for every time I heard something so crazy when you're dealing with these high conflict personality individuals how they suck you in and make you think that they're the best thing since sliced bread, you know? I mean, it, 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 you know, it's just very deceiving. And sometimes it's it's really mind-boggling how much uh, 
when they get into a person's head, when they get into a person's spirit, um, it's almost as if you're under a spell. It's almost as if people they have you doing up. things that you don't, uh -oh, that you don't, um, you know, ever envision yourself doing. You get all hung up in love and, you know, deception with somebody else that you would just start risking everything because one thing about these high conflict individuals and if you haven't done the work of cleaning out your own wounds y'all gonna fit like a hand in the glove and it's gonna be amazing how much you're gonna feel like this person is made just for you and vice versa um, but that is going to prove to be the, how do you say, the go thread through y'all's madness. That's all. That's just going to be the linchpin through y'all craziness. Um, and what keeps you locked together. Cowan said that Shara, with Shara, he found a chance to have a family that he never had. You know he said he was thinking, what would my life have been like if my mom had found a husband who stuck it out with us? An ex-con who had long since changed his life, Cowan said he wasn't about to judge Shara on other <laughs> whispers that she may have had a role in Lorenz's murder. So I gave her a chance and looked past the rumors, he said. Six months later, the couple and, the, and five of Wright's children Moved to Houston to start a new life. Accelerated relationship. Don't forget it. Look at the signs. Let's hurry up. Let's solidify this. Let's get this together. Let's make ourselves a couple. Let's buy rings. Let's get married. We're talking within, within a year. This is insane. Oh, boy. But him looking for love and being starved for, star for love. I know all about this game. Cat and mouse. Anyway, again, six months later, the couple moved to Houston to start a new life. And Cowan's main job as an auto carrier transporter was going well. We were in a beautiful neighborhood. The kids were excelling and making new friends, girlfriends, getting on the honor roll. Things like that mattered to me. Cowan said the couple loved watching murder mysteries together. Hmm, go figure. In addition, the subject of Lorenz's murder hardly was hardly taboo. It was discussed openly. One reoccurring thing she would ask me a lot was, do you ever think that they will find who killed Lorenzo? And I was like, yeah. My answer was always going to um, match. Yes, we're going to find out someday. People talk. The couple talked about marriage. Colin said they would look at rings, and it very well could have happened, but it never did. Cowan said that the constant trips to Memphis for court hearings dealing with the children's estate were getting tiring and expensive. And then I guess what the straw that broke his back was, then one day Cowan said Cheryl learned that Lorenzo's father, who was the executor of the children's estate, got a more than 200,000 royalty check from a video game Lorenzo was featured in. Shara wanted some of that money, and she wouldn't let it go. And that was really a turning point for old boy. So in February 27, Collins moved back to Memphis. He says he and Shara remained friends until one day last November when he was forced to ask himself a serious question. I had to ask if I was looking at grief in Shara's behavior or guilt. And that's usually what happens. You usually get out of the fog, fear, obligation, and guilt. And you begin to listen to your own self and not the propaganda that you've been fed and brainwashed uh, by the abuser, and then you begin to come to your conclusions, and you might see that they were different than what you had 
initially thought. Um, my heart goes out to, again, this family, Lorenzo's uh, mom and sisters, his children. I really want to say I'm really sorry that this happened to your loved one. And you can rest assured that I believe justice will be served in this case. All right, peace and blessings. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time in the Mental House Sports Edition.